Do my startup investors want to fire the CEO? The biggest fear you're likely to have as a startup CEO is that your investors will fire you and hire an experienced CEO. The reality is that being fired is usually 100% in your control. And that's what today's video is all about. I'll explain through the stories of two CEOs that I know that did get fired, how you can greatly reduce the chances of being fired. I hope you like it. Hi, I'm Brett. On my channel, I help early stage startup CEOs like you raise money and grow your startup. So if this sounds like you, then hit the subscribe button and the bell so you get notified every time I release a new video. Let's get started. And let's start with why should you get fired as CEO? I was working with a CEO named Jack for the past few years. Jack's startup was on fire. They had a very motivated and talented team, a great set of products, and revenue was growing nicely, or so it seemed. Better yet, Jack's company had just closed its latest round of funding. Now, they had plenty of money to help accelerate their growth. Then, in a heartbeat, it was over. Jack told me during our monthly update call that he had been fired by his board of directors that morning. I asked Jack what happened, and he said the board has accused me of misstating our revenue. Jack and I continued talking. I'm going to simplify our conversation, but the reality is that, in my opinion, Jack did indeed mislead his new investors. And quite honestly, Jack misled me too. Jack never told me what he was up to. I would have never told him that misleading investors about your revenue is a good idea. I believe Jack's board and investors had no choice but to fire him. Having said that, I can relate to the pressure that Jack obviously felt to meet his numbers. However, you can't ever, ever, ever give in to the pressure. You have to own the truth. The sad thing is, I believe Jack would have been just fine if he had just gotten ahead of the story. Getting ahead of the story means telling your major investors, potential new investors, and your board of directors about any major problems you have before they find out on their own. View these challenging events as a way to build trust with your investors. For example, when I was raising money, my new VP of sales, Tommy, quit right as we were receiving term sheets. I chose to tell my investors that Tommy quit and what my plan was for replacing him. None of my new investors pulled their term sheets. Now let's go to the flip side. Why shouldn't you get fired as CEO? My wife was working on a startup that was doing great. The CEO, Samir, was fantastic. Revenue and customers were growing, and it looked like the company was poised for success. Then, the VP of engineering went to the board of directors and told them that he would quit unless Samir was fired. Usually, an experienced board of directors will back the CEO when this happens. However, in this case, the board sided with the VP of Engineering and fired Samir. It turned out to be a disastrous decision. The board hired a new CEO several months later, but the company never recovered from Samir's departure. Sales dropped to next to nothing. Eventually, the company was sold for pennies on the dollar. Samir moved from Silicon Valley to New York started a new company with the exact same mission as his previous Silicon Valley based company. This time, with support of investors, his company actually succeeded. And now we're on to the final point. What can you do to prevent yourself from getting fired? Two CEOs got fired in our story today. Jack got fired for the right reasons and Samir got fired for the wrong reasons. It really doesn't matter to you 
the reasons you've been fired because, well, you're out. However, we can learn from both stories three things you can do to help yourself from being fired. First, you can't ever, ever, ever mislead your investors or your board members. I can guarantee you that there are going to be challenging situations in your future. How you handle these situations will determine if you stay CEO. You want to, as I said earlier, get ahead of the story. Second, focus relentlessly on your company culture. A great company culture is the biggest leading indicator of startup success. If you lead by example, and you are a walking, talking example to your team every day, and you hire a team that improves your culture, you will exponentially improve your chances of staying CEO. And more importantly, you will exponentially improve your startup's chances of success. Third, the composition of your investors matters a lot. I'm not going to lie to you. Raising money is hard. Sometimes you have no choice but to take money from investors that you have misgivings about. However, you want to avoid these investors at all costs. Bad investors come in many shapes and sizes. For example, in Samir's case, his investors were bad because they were inexperienced. Sometimes you have what's called a dysfunctional board, where it's an ego contest between board members. I've been a part of a board like that and it can stop a company in its tracks. My advice is look beyond who is giving you the most amount of equity and choose investors that are the best fit for your startup. For example, Greg took angel funding from an investor that became difficult to deal with after the funding. Greg took quick action and refunded the investor's money. It was a gutsy move that turned out to be the right move. I recently shot a video on the subject of bad investors. Click on the card in the right hand corner of this video to watch it. Now if this content is resonating with you then please hit the like button right now. One final thought. Startups are fragile. I was having lunch with the managing partner of the VC fund where I was an entrepreneur in residence. Mike said to me, I can think of a hundred things right now that will kill your startup. Mike's point was that your startup is fragile. It's unbelievably hard to overcome all the issues you will encounter and achieve success. You only have control over yourself. You can reduce the fragility of your startup. You should act with integrity at all times. You can get ahead of the problems you're going to face. Finally, you can choose supportive investors. Now, what did you learn from today's video? Put your answer in the comments column below today's video. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments column too, and I'll be happy to answer them for you. Now, I have one more thing for you today. It's my free startup pitch deck template. It has all the slides you need to develop an awesome pitch deck. Click the link below today's video and it's yours for free. And if you haven't already, join my free group of startup CEOs, Zero to Pitch. It's a community for startup CEOs focusing on growing their early stage startups and startup CEOs raising money for their early stage startups. Click the link below this video to join. Finally, Click the subscribe button to get notified every time I release a new video. I'm Brett at brettjfox.com. Thanks for watching today. Take care. Bye.